and um, we're hoping to be efficient, maybe have one or two meetings a month until about January, at which point we'll hope to have most of the information gathered and then the meetings after that leading up to um, the vote should be fewer. That's kind of the background information. Does anybody want to volunteer? I, I think, um, personally, I think we should um, fill our vacancy because that person could be considered for that committee as well. Actually, what I had thought of is that um, because, uh, well, I don't know who's, who's available and wants to come forward and be as, so we, so we have a vacancy if everybody's done no Bill Irving um, resigned one, one year before the end of his term. So, we have a vacancy that we need to fill. Um, uh, what I, I would like, we did this last year and I felt it was kind of rushed because I didn't, didn't really feel I had a chance to understand who we were appointing. It's our, it's our uh, duty as the budget committee to appoint somebody. It's not an elected position. Um, so as, an elect, as, a, as a duty to appoint, I'd like to know who the candidates are who are interested in it and why they're interested and what they can bring to the, to the committee. So what I would suggest is that we table the um, election of the, or selection of the next uh, uh, replacement until the next meeting. Uh, in the meantime, have the town advertise that there is this opening and have people come forward, indicate their interest in it, and uh, in the next meeting we can discuss it and evaluate it. And select. That's 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 an approach that I suggest would make me more comfortable than the last time. And I think there are, there are folks who are um, who are available to do it, but not everybody necessarily knows um, who they are or, or what they bring. So that's Mr. Chairman. Brent right. Crozier, Wallingsford Water and Sewer District. Uh, by tradition, and it goes back a long time, the next person in the election, previous election cycle who came in next was generally appointed. Yeah. That was the tradition. That's tradition. That's not law. I understand. And and by, by my understanding, that tradition wasn't followed a couple of years ago. And so I'd rather go through a process of selecting based on we're making an appointment. It's our it's our decision. I'd like to know who's available to do it. And and uh, work on it and do it now. I support that. I know that um, the select board has filled the vacancy that way recently. I think the uh, school board has as well. And it it's, makes sense. Uh, people who might not have been available in January might find themselves available and willing to serve. It would be nice whenever they are. So, yeah. um, so I, I'm just closure for years. I mean, that's been our, our processes because those people ran and they were elected by the voters, uh, we always felt that it made sense to honor with the, the people that the voters chose and go back to the ballot. I'd say so, the ballot they, chose three top vote getters. They were not elected, yeah. They, they, were they weren't elected. elected. No, they were elected. So <coughs> if, if we no. change it, well, so this is one of the things that we should probably consider is we change this process. We should really put it in our guidelines because there is no process around this and we've always gone back to the ballot um, so now we're suggesting changing that. Um, I also want to know if there's going to be an interview process and if the whole board is going to interview the candidates um, and are we going to vote on the candidates? So how, so how would that work? That's how I would see it, is that we would all get to hear who's available, understand what their interest is, what, they're, what they bring to the, to the committee, and then we would we'd vote on that. Yeah. So why would you not consider the people who ran? Well, they would. If, they, if they're interested, they could come forward and put their names in. They just wouldn't have a priority. Right. It would be the selection of the, of the committee. And maybe that's the way everybody has their, their preference for voting. If, if your preference is to take the next highest vote getter, that's, that's fine. That's how you can vote. Um, I think, but, but just to be clear, three people were elected and they're, you know, they're here. The, the, next, the next people, three people on the list, did not get elected, um, but we can appoint them. So I, I don't think we have to honor 
<clears throat> the election. I don't, and I don't think that's because somebody, and, and I'm, just, I'm just saying out of principle, just because somebody is interested in, and wants to be on it doesn't, and they, and they ran, it doesn't mean that they're the best selection. So you, as you're saying, you don't really think they're responsibility for the candidates to ran? No. I think the election's over. I, I agree with that. It's the budget committee, the RSSA, municipalities where members are at large or elected, they can see this will be filled by the appointment by the budget committee. So that's us. And it's up to us to choose a person that we think best fits the needs of the budget committee. And it may very well be that next Yeah, it could. Yeah. Yeah, just... Well, I think if you just for what it's worth, your point about people who didn't register to, book, to uh, run in January might be available now, and uh, this would give an opportunity for them to, to come forward. There may not be anybody who's going to come forward, but I know I just made it in and under the wire, all right, and uh, I might have missed the opportunity had um, it been a week earlier. So uh, there could be people out there. I don't know of anybody, but I think your point is well made on that. And that's how we handle the vacancies for someone more. I mean, it seems to, <coughs> Pardon, it seems to make sense to cast a wide net. And I think you're right that the, the next most qualified person uh, submits their name as the person that was the runner up. And you all want to, I won't be voting, it'll be, <laughs> it'll be the actual act of issue, but. I would imagine, I can imagine that will be, maybe she won't be back, but uh, it makes sense to me to do it that way. I mean, we had, the other night we had vacancies, we had vacancies on a number of committees in town um, and traditional appointments that we used to be made at town meeting. We could have, by the the, um, the warrant that passed, just appointed whoever we wanted, but we thought it would be best just to cast a wide net and put it out there and see what interest there was. I mean, I think it's a, it's a decent practice for what it's worth. So can we define the process so we're clear on what that's going to be? Well, that's good. Uh, having not done it before, well, I think the select board has done it. Um, I, I, I recall seeing an, a message on a, on a web page that there was um, an opening. What we did, we, we, we set a, a, a defined period on an opening. You know. I think the first time and then I think we extended it, actually. I don't think we had, I think we had any interest in the first two weeks, to be honest with you, Kim. So, um, so you could pick whatever the magic date is. I mean, when, you might want to figure out what your schedule's going to be, too. But, um, no, I don't think it's <coughs> out two weeks, three weeks, and then you're going to need time for, I would say, that all the folks that sign up should have an opportunity to come before the budget committee and make their case. That's the fair thing. That's the fair, fair thing to do, and you all, uh, in an open meeting, will elect whoever you want to elect. I mean, so an interview it's up to you process all. by the budget committee and then a voting process. I'm sorry. Interview process by the budget committee and then a voting process. Yeah. I think that makes sense. So everybody understands who's, who's coming forward. You want them to send an email like you got on the phone call, like yeah, why you wanted to run. Yeah, well, I think that's where I think. Yeah, I think if you so, they're so we're not they're all mine. Yeah. Right. No, I would have. I would have. I think it'd be awesome if we had ten people. I'll be honest with you, but especially if one was the secretary. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I had I had two two thoughts, and they could, we could add others. But one would be um, why you're interested in in joining the budget committee, and the second would be you know what do you think you can. What would you bring to the budget committee? So there's an experience, a, you know, your professional background, whatever it is. There might be other. There might be other. You know, that's all I can think of. If anybody else has other thoughts, but that's what I would put out in the in the email. This is if you're interested, show your interest, explain why, and what you bring. I think that's fine, and I think you know once we get a, a, once the period is closed, then we can send all of us all of the because I assume it's going to come in either by email or paper and somebody can, you know, the town administrator staff can copy it and send it off to us in a PDF. I think that's a good approach. I mean, those are the two most important questions and 
when people will either expand upon it as they will or not, and that will tell us something. And so we would, we would do that. They reply at our next meeting. They come in. Um, we give them a chance to to speak, answer those questions in person, answer any questions that the committee has, and then and then vote. You mean we'd ask them to leave at that point, so it's not awkward. But... Right. I mean, I suppose we could modify the process if we have a hundred responses, but I don't think any of us are expecting that. So I think I think it's going to be manageable. If not, we can we can call them in and we can try to hammer out something that makes sense. Is that, that makes sense to me. Simple? And would would you feel that how does the, the committee feel that the next meeting, which would be normally our first quarter budget review meeting, would that be too long to wait? Or should we should we try and do something before then? And, and when is the first quarter usually available. It's usually, it's been in, at the beginning of May. Yeah. So, I thought you know, I've sort of, I've been moving around with a possible schedule that it's not a, it's for us to talk about, but it, when I looked at past uh, last year, it was, I think, the second in May. So, so if we got so, on it right now, advertised tomorrow, could give two weeks, and then by early May when we meet again, yeah. um, we can have that those interviews and make a selection. Well, we need to be on the 24th, come on the 21st of May. We need to have a talk with you. I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. Sure. Sorry. The 24th is three okay. weeks away. Well, April. April. Right. And then we need to be down to that day and elect a point that day. And then be ready for the next meeting. Yeah, I think that's to do it faster and get it done so they can be part of it from the beginning. Yeah. That makes sense. So that's second the second amount of time for people to respond. Yeah. Oh, wait, well, because we'll likely get people who already ran. Maybe there'll be some others. But uh, you so know, just to put out being new here, I think one of the advantages of that approach is you're going to find some other, you know, I don't want to be good flip here, but suspects that might be great for other things too. And obviously, if somebody comes up and they're willing to spend time on doing something like this, they're probably very much willing to do something else. And I've always found that if you ask people, if you know that they're willing, you just have to ask and people do volunteer stuff. So I think that's another positive of this approach. To all the volunteer pool. Yeah, yeah, certainly is not a, well, we certainly don't have an overwhelming. Uh, yeah pool of volunteers that there are a lot more positions in town that we need people for us. You're actually right here. Yeah, I, I just I can't help but think that anybody who was serious about it would have run. Uh, you know, I, I may get that, Kim. And I, I think there's some validity to that for sure. But I think what John was saying, or and George too, I mean, Carly rather was saying, you know, it changes, you know? I mean, you know, you get a different job and all of a sudden you got more free time, you want to do what you couldn't do. It. So life does change. Uh, no, no. You may be absolutely right. I mean, it could just be the three people that ran, and you're going to choose. That's who you got to choose from. I mean, it, but it doesn't hurt to cast a wide net and ask. I mean, oh, the three of them is in for thanks. I mean, you know, who knows? You never know. Well, that, that's a that's a process that, that I support. I'm I'm getting a sense that there's a, a general consensus on on that. Um, do we want to? Vote on it, or do we want to just just take it as a general consensus, and we'll set up a meeting for the twenty fourth? I think consensus is fine, but I think I'm doing it this way. Then we'll do it this way. Then I think it should be written out for future. I think that's what it's going to be. Was that unwritten? <coughs> Can I say something about guidelines? Actions of prior budget committees. The budget committee that worked on those guidelines is not this budget committee. And so the actions of prior budget committees do not hold any sweat in the current committee. Now this committee could read them, they're many, many, many pages long and adopted, but right now this budget committee, this one, that was just recently constituted, has no guidelines. And because you know, the RSS say that it's our, you know, we have the ability and the duty to fill any, any um, 
to point to any vacancies. And it would be a responsibility as a board, or board yeah. to readopt or amend or change whatever <coughs> you want or not adopt if that's what you wanted to, your guidelines. We're supposed to do that as a, as a note of things on my long agenda that I need to do for the next meeting. Um, we're supposed to do the same thing, actually. So. That will probably have a late time job descriptions. Yeah, well, you know. Well. Yeah, yeah, probably. Or the officials don't really have job descriptions. <laughs> Still on that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so let's. We will set a, a meeting for the twenty fourth. Um, we'll get an advertisement out. Um, hopefully, as soon as possible. Uh -huh. um, hearing the town administrator in the, in the corner will help us with that. Absolutely. Okay. With that, I think we can move on to the next item. Next item. Oh, Aaron. Could we go back to number oh, I'm sorry. two, yeah, we please? On that. Because we have, we really need to name the committee at our next board meeting, which happens to be next Thursday. Um, so if we had uh, a volunteer tonight, that would be ideal. I mean, I don't mind doing that. Um, I know my wife is is has volunteered for it. I don't know if that's a if you want if you want to have that situation. <laughs> I don't know if she, anybody's talked to her or anything. But, um, so I'll put my name out there if it makes, if it's okay that if Shelly is still going to be on it, that I'm there as a representative of the community. I don't see a problem with that. That's up to the school. school. All right, yeah. that's what I was thinking. Too. That's what the school board. Yeah. We can only decide what we can decide. Yeah. It's up to them to decide whether or not they can avoid it. Should she be a public or not, so. member? As far as I know, yes. Yes, yeah, yeah, so. But it's a really important, I mean, not just speak for you, but it's a really important committee. I mean, this is yeah. a, a pretty big uh, deal that the mayor of Southernworth has uh, placed upon us. So. Is anybody else interested in, in that? So, here we are, I guess. Thank you, I'll just check to see if that's okay. <coughs> That's fine. And Joe Dash would be the representative on the Great. school Good luck, Joe. Thank you. <laughs> no, it's, it's going to be a lot of fun, actually. After Joe's whole season, I can be resolved. I do a lot. It's going to be fun. She thinks that's going to be fun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's going to be interesting. There you go, for sure. Okay. Uh, you give something else for my wife and I to do together. Yes. Well, at least twice a month, right there. <laughs> <laughs> Change them only in so much as I try to push first 
some of the larger departments of the things that we might want to spend more time on, such that if we look at them in one meeting and we come up with a question in meeting two later, we still have time to get back to that department head to get try to get more feedback if the budget committee wants more feedback. So that, in essence, was uh, really what I did. I also added on the on the back page on the second part. I um, those in those cases where they were dependent upon dates. I actually, and you had started to do this, John, so I added it to some others. You know, it says exactly what the RSA say or what the DRA tells us, like between this Monday and that Monday. And I will point out that I have some, uh, um, well, let, let, me, let me say also that this was not in last year's, but near the bottom, it's the last day to post the town and the school warrant, and, the last, and I'll go it the last day for the budget committee to deliver the signed budget and warrant article recommendations. So that's our deadline. It's January 23rd. And we, by that time, we need to have signed budgets given to, to the select board, the school board, et cetera, et cetera. And we were late this year. We did not meet the, the, tw the 2019 deadline. We were a day late. And so had there been a bond, and it wasn't, but had there been a bond, that action of being late would have nullified the bond. We would not have been successful with the bond. So I thought it was important that we have these dates. These are, these are RSA mandated dates, and we really need to keep to them, especially if there are items like bond warrants that depend on this. And the third to the last item, the, the deliberative session for the town, it has the snow date of February 11th. And I've highlighted it because that's outside the sessions. And John, you said you would check with the, the I did actually last last year when I was doing this. It's the same issue because you have basically Saturday to Saturday, two Saturdays in the time in between them to do your SB2 deliberative sessions. And so if we wanted to have, as we had done for town town meeting and for <coughs> school board meeting, the school school meetings, um, we did them on Saturdays. And if we wanted to do that, we were basically in the window, the only window that's available in our in, under the uh, SB2. So I sent an email out and I forwarded it to the to the budget committee who was uh, on at the time. I was probably on it, but you know, it, no, it wasn't it, important then. You were, I think. I think yeah, was gone. by then, yeah. Um, but uh, basically, um, I, and I can find the email, but it was from the attorneys at the municipal association, and they said as long as it's the scheduled date is within those timelines, and she explained why she had that that um, opinion. Um, then it was fine. A snow date that goes beyond it was not going to cause a problem for us. So we can do the Saturday and Saturday, and if there's a snow date and it's outside that window, that doesn't. That was the, that was her conclusion and, and opinion. So um, I can find that email and circulate yeah. it again. So everybody does, sees does it. Does someone have to open the meeting though and recess it? So in other words, if we have it scheduled for the Saturday, which is within the dates, yeah. does someone have to come in, open the meeting, and recess it to the following Tuesday? Is that what makes it legal? Yeah, we didn't. Um, it, was, it was had to do with it being a, 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 a uh, like an unplanned circumstance, like a whole weather thing. It wasn't related to. It, there was no discussion of opening and then and then closing. Uh, or, or, and, uh, yeah, I would hate. I, I guess I would hate to miss the, the to date. miss it because. If, if, the, if a bond warrant were important, and so I mean, I'm wondering maybe even um, I don't know maybe the DRA maybe bond maybe bond Johnson. I think this is wonderful. I think this is great. I mean, it would certainly help the select board. I can tell you that much. Having things pushed up, um, I think we're all still trying to learn our way around the, the, this newer system. The only um, the only thing is that the, the deliberative session is going to be set by the school district, by the school board and the select board, not by the budget committee, just throwing that out there. Okay, and that We'll be taking the date for when the deliberative session will be. Understood. Okay. That's, that's fine. So, but nonetheless, it has to be, you between know, those, the, the school sure. and the select board have to do it between 2-1 and 2-8. Yeah, right. So we can, we can, you know, this is on the budget committee. Directory on Google. I can just go in and highlight those. Perfect. I think everything is yeah, perfect. I just, just want to make sure there's no misunderstanding. Yeah. Anyone. And thank that you for saying that. The, yes. No, we, thank we, had, you. we had the same understanding last time. We put it up there as a, you know, here's a, here's what seems to fit, and and uh, it, it's a, a piece of, it's a tool that, that can help 
question about the select board as well. So what I can do is highlight it and say that it's set. I'll include the language that says it's set by the yes. And the school board was very gracious at the select board the last time around because we hadn't been through it and they had and we were stepping on their toes, selecting the day they wanted. So <laughs> anyway, so oh yeah, yeah, we ended up swapping the dates. Right. Yeah, we had to. Right. And that right, and the same thing can happen now with the two bodies. Want sure. to, you know. I don't know. I think it's great. Pick, pick straws or whatever. Yeah. I think it would be helpful for everybody having it. I got one question on October 16th. Is the town going to have enough time to have their quarterly reports ready by the 16th of October rather than the 23rd? It represents, I, I, don't, I don't know the answer to that question, but I can tell you it represents the third Wednesday <coughs> of the month. And so. Is there any reason why we can't move that to the 23rd? Give the towel more time? Well, that's also what the departmental budget what the schedule is saying. So we can check in with the town, uh, Mike. I think and then it's always good to have more time for everything. So I, don't, I, 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 I don't know. I, who knows what so the, the month will look like, but I think Carol is probably right. That it's doesn't give nice much time. time. All right. Normally, we normally we get it. The budget committee's been getting it the Friday before we look at it, right? So if we did it the 18th, well, we should have that same yeah. policy yeah. of getting our budgets yeah. on the Friday before. I think that's the good practice so that we all can see. Oh, it. just checking. Yeah. It's not our see a policy it's change. It's not up to us. It's, it's, the, it's our request for the yeah. budget to be handed so we can look at it. I can't imagine we wouldn't honor that request, but I mean, it's just a matter of whether there's enough time to try right. to get it. Right. So, can we have the, the board and the town administrator look at this to see if it's doable? Yeah, I think it would be helpful if the select board looked at it too. Only, but only from the perspective of exactly what Carol just brought up. You know, will the new stage work with, with um, staff making sure they have enough time to get things done? Thanks, Mr. Confer. Um, your May 1st meeting, the quarterly review, is that not also the same day the school is having its withdrawal committee meeting? And you therefore lose Mr. Desch? Yes. That's a good catch. I'm sure he's dying to see those first quarter. And also, on school board member will be going. Fair right. salivating game. No, because she's not on the committee. <laughs> So she'd want to know. So May 8th? I would imagine she could come to this. May 8th is, is uh, fine with me. But <laughs> I'm sorry. We have to just. Because that one's probably one that we want to answer today. Or? Oh, yeah, we, want, one, yeah. we do want to answer that one today. Yeah. Sure. That's the most pressing. So. so anything on the town's calendar that would, would say that there's something else going on. May 8th is, is, uh, is okay with me. Does anybody else have a... Let's, so let's move, let's, let's have our next meeting on May 8th. Let's make that... Well, no, our next meeting is going to be on the 24th. Right. And then our next our quarterly review meeting would be on May 8th. Two slots for in case. Yeah, I'm assuming we're going to need that. 
we've not, you know, we've not needed to, but it, it's there in case we do, and, or in case we start to lose patience with one another, and somebody says maybe we should come back next Wednesday. Well, we had, I think, two extra meetings. Uh, you were here on that. Um, we, we had two more meetings even after oh, I the see. holidays right, last time. They were time. necessary. Yeah, yeah okay. they were. Yeah. Um, I mean, hopefully there won't be. So that'll be our push. Um, realizing the goal is to get this done before the holiday, if we got pushed, because we got a hearing, we got a hearing on the 11th. Um, so I think we met like the second or something like that um, last year. Yeah, if we had to, we could. I mean, if something. <coughs> there's time the following week. I mean, it's Christmas week, but there's right. there's time. Okay. Again, we're just taking this under advisement at this point. Anybody else? Other, other questions um, or thoughts at this point? But we can we can find out. Well, we it. might possibly know, like at that first meeting, uh, you know, depending on how far we get, like at the twelve eleven meeting, we need to start scheduling. Well, that's what we ended up right. doing. Yeah, yeah. So we realized we needed more time. So. I mean, would you find last year? I mean, this is a new process for people, but. If, if we're starting these things earlier in the year, I mean, wouldn't the hope be that that fourth quarter then is more of a, a final review and all the hard work's been done versus waiting until December? You guys are talking about two different items. I thought we were talking about the budget reviews and the... Right. Budget review of a quarter is different than next year's budget finalizing. Okay. Uh, and that's a question I would I, I don't know where I'll fit that in, but... Well, well, yeah, I was going to say that the, the process of, of reviewing budgets for, let's say, 2019, but also working with the departments and prepping them for 2020 can still be done earlier. I mean, I think, you know, we should have a pretty good idea of what our, our costs are going to be for 2020 as we move through 2019. There's not a lot of variability in the budget. That's why. Just saying... Usually, the, the way the, the way the departments, the way I understand it, I'm so familiar, so familiar from one, only one experience, but uh, is that they're really getting their budgets together by this time. And sometimes, like for you know, the water and sewer district needed more time for an engineering report. So yeah, yeah. so there's, <coughs> I'm I'm a little, uh, I just I'm not concerned, but I would be cautious that, that this is pushing the process forward for the town folks and whether they can get everything done in time. And that's it's not up to you know, it's not up to me, but it just just can they can they get their budgets in earlier? Um, it seems like it's maybe it's just a, a last minute itis and, and the dates here so you don't do it till the end, but but it seems like they're pretty busy uh, and it's a crunch. Maybe maybe um, our town administrator give us a sense for how hard that push is for the budgets from the departments, is it? Um, it's going to be an adjustment, and I'm sure it will be difficult for them, but it's going to have to happen in order for us to meet these deadlines. So um, we're just going to have to work with them on that. But I would, to that end, and, and um, Mr. Desch's comment, this board has typically had 2018 final or nearly final figures by the time they are deliberating on the operating budget for the subsequent year. And that's not going to be happening this year, as you're seeing from your schedule. And that's going to be necessary. So, you know, I can't predict how current your financial reports will be that you'll have to review by that time, but it may be only as good as, you know, 10 months into the year or third quarter. So we're going to have to, as a group, get used to um, making information um, making projections only on third quarters, but also using previous year data and less data in the current year. I think as, as you get more familiar with the process, and we, you know, it took us a uh, hundred plus years to, to get it right under the old system, so it will take you a number of years to get it right under the new system. So the department will be back to get used to it, and the budget committee and the, and the select boards so of future will have to. Uh, get used to dealing with historic data and current data and, and, and know that they're making the best projections they can. And that's just how it's going to have to be that day.
this is very helpful though because it's someone who well, we all, most of us went through this process last time. It was a newer, not so much maybe for you all because you've been dealing with the school side, but for us it was different. Um, and we weren't as quick as we, we, we probably should have been. We were probably, we were probably operating too much in the old model and thinking we had more time than we really did. So I think this is very helpful. And the department heads will have to get their budgets in heck of a lot earlier than this because they're going to be getting them to the select board. So we've been formulated to then send on to you all. So budget work's going to start with the bill somewhere. Okay. It's just a comment. I mean, isn't the school doing this all along? Don't you have to like, be a year and six months? Yeah. So we're just we're just on you. Yeah. Sorry. It's just a little bit of change for yeah, adults. Just yeah. make sure that the department heads know. It's, they're going to be a little quicker, mm -hmm. a little sooner. And, um, I'm, I, th I agree. Uh, it makes sense to me that, that we start earlier and we're not crunched at the end. And like you said, this, this, the school board's been done it for years. Um, sure Any other um, discussion about the, uh, about the schedule? The public schedule? The things that we have set in stone are the meeting on the 24th and the meeting on the 8th. I just add that I, I have some changes to make based on this discussion, and I will uh, amend the document and send everybody the link. You should all have access to the uh, to that folder, so you can take a look at it and you know, continue to uh, make suggestions, comments, and the like. Yeah, and I'll let you know um, after Monday. The or at select board has any changes they have to see. Uh, at that, I think we've worked our way through, um, through the agenda. Does anybody have any other business that they'd like to bring up at this time? I mean, I guess I, I do. I'm not sure if it's business as much as me getting an understanding of, of the process. So <clears throat> I like the, the quarterly reviews. I think those are helpful. When I'm not sure if I see much variability from year to year on what the different departments' budgets are. That's why I think we can probably be pretty on board with them. You know, what I did see, though, was, you know, the budget number and the actuals for 2019 were typically less than what was budgeted. So, and that's a good thing. That means the departments are, are managing the money pretty well. But there are a couple things. One is, and Mike, I'm not sure if this is the select board piece, but there's there's this lapse of appropriations where you know, the budget is this much, expenses are this much, what's left over goes into some general fund. And I guess the, the question is, how does that get um, allocated within the current budget? I mean, Suzanne, that's what I, I'd asked Tell you a while. Now. You said it was like about a million dollars or so. so you know, in the training and stuff, it talks about it being, you know, maybe you really only need to keep, you know, 7 to 15 percent of right, that. Right, so it goes into fund balance for, right. for a host of reasons. But, right. Um, yeah, it's, it's up to the, the select board, okay, so where they are, to um, to set what they believe the percentage should be. Um, and I would say that this this board, well, this board hasn't been done fund balance yet, but the past boards have been very conservative, and rightfully so, in how what they keep in fund balance um, for a whole, again, for a whole host okay, But it's a but select board. Yeah, they, they handle that. But, um, yeah. And it, um, a portion goes into fund balance. Another portion goes into help me save me for myself, what's it called? Uh, the offset taxes. Uh, the overlay. Overlay? Well, overlay, it's not that it goes into overlay. But overlay gets choose up whatever fund balance it needs in order to. So it can go into two different sort of pockets, and not pockets, pots, let's call that not pockets. Um, so we have to Jordan sort of terms but, but uh, and, yeah. And just quickly, I, I just threw that overlay, but it, it, it's what is used. It, it's where the state wants us to account for any abatements that are made in property taxes. Mm -hmm. That's the okay. sense. And then I guess the other thing as far as the department heads comes back to you know, the general guidance that we give them, right? Does, does the budget committee give the department heads the guidance? In other words, could we say to them, you know what your actuals were for 2018? Well, I'm sorry, you're going to know pretty well. You know what your actuals are for 2018. You're going to have a pretty good idea of what 2019 is. 
you're going to have an idea of what is going to be really some excessive expense above what your prior one is. But you have to keep it into your current expenses or your actuals and then justify in these meetings and you know, when we review the, the 2020 budget, justify why the expense for the next year is, is X number of, of dollars above the prior. So I'm just saying that if we give them guidance ahead of time, there's less surprises and less battles as they should go toward the end of the year and putting together the 2020 budget. You're not going to battle with the department head. You're going to have a battle with the select board. You shouldn't have a battle with Yeah. You know what I mean? It, you're, you're giving guidance to the, to the select board who has agency to move money around. And things yes. And things. Well, well uh, you, you, yeah, you're right. If you're, if you're talking about specific, because we're a bottom line, we give a bottom line budget at the end of the day, but, but it's not really, we do look at individual right. departments and, and, and we do make decisions on um, what we're going to add or cut uh, based on those department line items. So um, I think having that, uh, having some guidelines or guidance for, but for the department heads would be helpful. I think that would be, that would help us all um, just be more on top of it rather than just someone comes in and starts talking about what they what they need and and uh, and, the, and the rationale sometimes is very strong and, and well reasoned and sometimes it's less well reasoned and, and so um, I think it would be good to give guidance so it's all well reasoned and, and uh, fits that model. I agree with I agree with both of you and I think that in the past some of us have tried to have some of these maybe higher level conversations earlier on in the season so that you know, both the, uh, the governing bodies as well as the budget committee have some sense of where things are going. So the sooner we can find out if there's anything unusual going on, then we can you know, get our, wrap our heads around that. But um, I would like to see us maybe provide some, just a guidance, you know, whether it's, look, we think, here's how budgets have been, you know, we'd like to see unless there's something strange and unusual, that maybe you can stay within a 2% overall, you know, something like that. That would be within our purview. It, it, it would just be a guideline. And say, hey, but right. here's if you, you know, you the governing bodies, when you come back to us, if you've got something that's different from that, you know, we're gonna, you know, we're gonna look at it. Right. We still have the bottom line. Yeah. But, right. But we have to figure out where that bottom line comes yeah. from. Jody, sorry. I have to disagree with you because. We sat together, and if the budget committee were to come to us when we created our budget as a select board, we were like, well, this is our budget that we're presenting to the select to the budget committee. It's the select board's budget that gets presented to the budget committee. The budget committee doesn't tell the select board what to do. We can make cuts as a budget committee later after you after they. <laughs> keep forgetting that I'm not part of that again. And I think that's one of the things that you'll find out now that you're not a select a select board member, that it, it, it was hard to take a step back. It was hard. Yeah. I, I'm not suggesting that we But when it was us, for example, you, were, you would not have allowed that. <laughs> it is my Actually, as the ex officio board member, I tried to have high-level conversations with the budget committee about where they thought you know, yeah, it's, it's, it's so your recollection it's might be different. <laughs> I was I was there making them as so you weren't here. I was here. Right now it's Mike, Denise, and Miles. So it's their budget that they will present to us, and we make recommendations after that. If you think the budget committee should go to the select board and say keep it within this, no, that's not what I'm saying. That's not what I'm saying. So I, we don't have that's, to continue with that conversation. Okay. That wasn't, you know, a, a guideline or an idea or something for a group. It's, it's an to idea. Work. I it's think what, what, to me it seems like it's, it's a little more proactive than reactive, rather than um, you know wondering what the, how the, the budget committee is going to react to a budget. There's a, there's a heads up that hey, we're we're really looking to keep it at two percent or, or something like that or, or less. Um, or whatever it is we decide, um, that's a good heads up to have. I mean, 
it's it's not us to, it's not for our place to say what the select board budget is. That it is what it is. <coughs> but we're going to eventually review it and recommend or, or not recommend or, or suggest cuts or, or whatever. So it's I think it's a it's a little more proactive. It doesn't have to be you know you must take this amount out of this. Right. Item. So, so I think that's I think we're saying the same thing. <laughs> any other, uh, Joe, do you have any other? Oh, Sorry. I have a comment. Okay, on February, ah, February, here we go. On April 24th, say we have zero or one candidate. Are we still going to recommend a meet for the one candidate or zero candidates for the budget committee's position? both scenarios, to be honest, Joe. Mm -hmm. and you, need to, you need to vote to elect the person. But if you don't have anyone, you got to come back and decide, okay, what the heck are we going to do next? So, I'm just one, one more thing. So. Yeah, I think we have. No, can we plan something else that night? Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay. Yeah. I mean, we're all going to be here. <laughs> Change the bylaws. We don't have bylaws. You mean the, the guidelines? The guidelines. You Sorry. No, no. Fine. Um, not a bad suggestion. I, I guess you know, what, what I, I had difficulty with the guidelines coming in, looking at them you know, for a couple of reasons. Um, I felt that they they overstepped what the budget committee has an, has authority to do. They had things like um, you know what what goes as a capital expense and what's not a capital expense. Um, they had a lot of reiteration of stuff that's in the RSA, so it wasn't necessary. And a lot of stuff about Robert's rules. I, th I think, in my understanding, I asked why we developed the guidelines in the first place. It was really to give the, the, new, the new budget committee chair a, a sense of what they need to do, um, and, and, and not necessarily to be rules that we need, need to follow. That was how it was explained to me, at least in, in that budget committee meeting. And to me, and we talked about it, and, and, and Bill Irving had suggested he would take a cut at it. Um, it didn't, didn't come to pass, but would, would be more of a, almost like a checklist of things that you've got to do. Like, you've got to, you've got to start off with your schedule. You've got to, you've got to, like, you know, you got to like your chair. Um, but I don't think, as, as Suzanne said, you can, you can adopt things that are for the next committee to come in. So if you said, um, well, the, the, Committee chair is going to be the the chair until until the next uh, you know after the election until the next meeting. You can't really say that because that's not really in our purview. It's it's a, it's a new budget committee. We don't have authority over it. Those so, guidelines came from another town. Other towns do this, so perhaps it'd be worthwhile to check with other towns and see how they adopt them and if they readopt them every time. Yeah, I just, I just, I guess there would be a lot of work to go through them to, to get them to a point where I would feel, my, myself would feel that. They don't need any rules. We're good. We get past. Yeah. So, so anyway, I get yeah, right. It's, it's a. I just felt there's a lot of work to do to them, and and uh, and it seemed like there's a lot already, uh, already defined in the RSA to fall. But I, I it's been almost a year now since I reviewed them carefully, so that's where I came out. Um, I think if we wanted to do that we'd have to go through a process of circulating guidelines and reviewing them as a group and uh, I'm not I'm not proposing that we do that but if, if uh, Floor's open if somebody wants to make a suggestion. So I can see us having a handbook, you know, something that is helpful, you know, sort of just procedurally. Uh, and that's what we talked about. Yeah. Uh, I thought Bill, is that what you just said, Bill? He did volunteer to try to draft something. And then he went and, and, uh, and resigned. Does so. the Municipal Association not have? Yeah, there's the, there's the handbook. Yes, there's the base, we have, that's the link right here. All right. The, the basic law of budgeting, right. which tells budget committees a lot of things, right. but it's also voluminous. So if you have like a one-page thing, that's what I'm asking. I guess in my question, I'm sorry, just a one-page thing do they that have, says. Do they not have a one-page? No, this is can't be. You need to have guidelines. You need to have rules. So you do. You should. I mean, I think that makes sense. Now, is it the ones that you have currently? I haven't read them. I Something don't. like this. 
I don't know. They, that that is the what's coming from the municipal side, but it, it, yeah. like the answer is rather lengthy. So. Yeah, that's. But I mean, you do have the statute, and you have Robert's rules of order to guide your meetings. Mm -hmm. At the very least, a checklist or something. I think would be a bad thing to do, or your board rather right, to do. But I, mean, I see value in having guidelines, but again, I'm not the one who's been drafting the for you, so it's easy for you to say that. But it's time off that you will have to work on it. Other towns have developed, and not every town has them. When I served on the budget committee many, many years ago, it was like the Wild Wild West. I mean, there was no consistency. The well, sheriff didn't know what he was doing. And <coughs> didn't care to try to get to know what he was doing. So, um, it wasn't the best process to, to govern the town by. It. So, but, and other towns have decided they should have them. So, I think it's worth your time looking into it. But, Again, I'm not the one drafting them. So. I, think, I think that's where we come down to the, the, the add a guideline that had the things that we need to do, but was less of a prescriptive, uh, that didn't overlap or, or step on things that were actually a slight forward part. Um, the takeaway, though, Your Honor, honestly, has to be that one board can not buy in the next board's hands. I mean, each board really should be adopting their guidelines every year. Just like the select board, we have guidelines for, for welfare. We have guidelines for uh, policy, for purchasing policy. Those things, those should be adopting those every year. They're welcome on it, so they'll work on the next one. But I mean, it's because you can't tie the hand of the, of the next board. So. so I agree with both of you. How's that? For my Solomon like stance. That's the basic guideline right there. So we don't want to go by it. Do they have, is that from the Municipal Association? Yes, it is. they have one? So, mm -hmm. there you go. So, if you have them, you look at it and it seems to make sense for, that that's what the Long for Budget Committee really wants to have as their, their set guidelines. Mm -hmm. That's what you should have done. You should have it from the last meeting last Why year. Why not? We've discussed this last year and the year before. He wasn't here though. Was I know he wasn't, but he was here last year. No, he wasn't. No, he, wasn't. he just got elected in March. Talking, he said. But Joe, but Joe was asking if he yeah. could see it, so yeah. he wants to look at it. It's not from the municipal association, is it? The basic law of budgeting is from the municipal association. Uh, are you talking about the handbook or the, uh, the guidelines that were circulated? Oh, no. Those are modeled after the town front one. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I know, but we adopted that. Yeah. So it's a That's it's Bill, a that's Ferran's version, and this is Bill's version. We talked about it for two years, and... Is that an electronic copy of the latest one? I don't think I say that. I can tell you whether or not it's the most updated one. I've got an electronic copy that has red lines in it. No, this, yeah. is not, this is not the most updated. Probably isn't the most updated. No, it's the most updated we have. But as a new committee, you should have the opportunity to update them if that's what you want to do. I mean, in my, I'm just, again, just one person. I have the version that has the dates that, that were changed. They're a different color. They're blue. And they have the dates. Where would you find that? On my computer. <laughs> 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 well, Bill Irving sent it out. Bill well, Irving okay. sent it to the budget yeah, committee. Yeah, last, I can send it. The first organizational meeting. And, um, yeah, I'm willing. I'm, I think that, that um, we can take a look at them and discuss them at the, on the, if we don't have any candidates and we have time, on the 24th. 24th. I forget which date it is. Um, then, yeah, we should talk about it. That's the roundabout point I wanted to get to. <laughs> Good. Glad we got there. Any other business or questions? Motion to adjourn. I'll second. Do I have a second? Do have a second? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.